Our esteemed representative from the second district of Marikina City, the Honorable Stella Luz A. Kimbo, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Magandang hapo na rin po. Today is day 555 of the COVID-19 pandemic. Since day one of the pandemic, 2,227,000 and 367 Filipinos have contracted COVID. 35,145 had died. At least 8.7 million people or Filipinos have lost their jobs. So far, four variants of the COVID-19 virus have emerged, producing three waves of significant increases in cases. So far, we have had three episodes of ECQ, MECQ in the NCR. The first lockdown imposed on March 15, 2020 was a clear necessity. At that time, we were dealing with a virus that we knew little about. Even international health authorities, such as the World Health Organization, were unsure of its mode of transmissibility and were quite prudent in sharing information regarding COVID. Mr. Speaker, kinailangan natin at ng buong mundo na maging maingat habang nag adjust at masusing pinag-aaralan ang virus na ito. During the first enhanced community quarantine, movement in and out of the region was heavily restricted. Only businesses operating in essential sectors were allowed to operate. Government work was limited to a skeletal workforce. Schools were shut down. And without widespread internet access and ownership of gadgets, we were unable to smoothly transition to online classes and ended up with a hybrid and non-uniform mode of education using a mix of printed learning modules and whatever online platforms were available to teachers and students. The economic cost of that ECQ was tremendous. Businesses in non-essential sectors, about 84% of all sectors, which according to the Labor Force Survey, employed about 28.2 million workers, were the hardest hit. By April 2020, unemployment rate hit a record high of 17.6%, with 8.7 million workers losing their jobs. Our economy lost an estimated 18 billion pesos per day of ECQ in March to May 2020. By the end of 2020, our GDP contracted by 9.6%, and our economy incurred a total loss of 3.2 trillion pesos. Mr. Speaker, ano ba ang ibig sabihin nito para sa ordinaryong Pilipino? Kawalan ng trabaho, kawalan ng kita, kawalan ng mahakain. In a survey conducted on September 2020, SWS estimated that about 30.7% of Filipino families experienced hunger. Ito po ang pinakamataas na hunger incidents na naitala natin in the last 22 years. Yet, despite these huge economic costs, there was a consensus among health experts that this was the best action to take given how little we knew of the virus. Hard lockdowns were, ne were necessary to slow the spread of COVID, save more lives, and rationalize the use of the limited capacity of the health sector. At simula noon, sa mutsari ng mga community quarantine ang inimpose. Naging bahagi na ng araw-araw nating buhay ang mga salitang napakahirap ma-memorize. In addition to ECQ, we have its less stringent counterpart, Modified ECQ or MECQ. The more flexible and open General Community Quarantine or GCQ and its modified counterpart, the MGCQ. Fast forward to today, the world now knows substantially more about COVID. Globally, we are better equipped to deal with COVID. We now know how the virus gets transmitted. And even as new variants arise, there's a relatively quicker way to identify these. We now have more reliable methods of testing, contact tracing apps have been developed, and doctors have now determined the best cocktail of drugs. The most important milestone, of course, was the introduction and approval for use of the first COVID vaccine by December 2020. 
The Philippines has capitalized on these global developments. We now have a vaccination program being implemented nationwide. As of last week, we have inoculated 21 million out of 109 million Filipinos, of which nearly 16 million are already fully vaccinated. The overall vaccination rate at 20% still leaves much to be desired, and many regions continue to have very low vaccination rates, tulad sa BARM, kung saan 7.2% lamang ng population ang bakunado. But there are pockets of moderate to high vaccination rates, especially in areas where COVID cases are concentrated. In the NCR, the IATF reported a vaccination rate of 56% last September 8. The city of San Juan, where the first locally transmitted COVID case was detected, had already reported achieving herd immunity. Bagamat kailangan pa nating paigtingin ang vaccination drive sa buong bansa, we are clearly in a better position today compared to the start of the pandemic. And yet, while the rest of the world continues to leverage on developments in vaccine technology to contain COVID, we continue to be heavily reliant on lockdowns as a disease control strategy. We are stuck in this vicious cycle, and it has resulted in one of the longest lockdowns in the world. Mr. Speaker, lockdowns made the most sense when vaccines were not yet available. It was the prudent thing to do while finding a more efficient method of disease control. But we now know that there are limits to the effectiveness of lockdowns. Being isolated for protracted periods of time is simply against human nature. Pagod na ang lahat. Marami na ang gutom. Kahit may ECQ, lalabas at lalabas pa rin ang bahay dahil marami sa ating mga kababayan ang no work, no pay. Sa NCR Plus, halos 6 million ang daily wage earners. Kung sapat sana at mabilis ang ayuda, walang problema. Ang kaso, hindi. Now that vaccines are already available, we must now be more open to alternatives to lockdowns. At this point of the pandemic, it is difficult to expect and rely on a full enforcement of an ECQ. And true enough, our current strategy is not working. Despite the imposition of ECQ last August 6 to 20, and the following MECQ up until the present, we have tallied record highs of over 20,000 cases for the past few weeks. A few days ago, we recorded 26,303 cases. At makikita natin dito sa graph na sa pinakahuling ECQ, unlike in the previous ECQs, patuloy ang pagtaas ng cases. While the past three ECQs seem to have slowed down the spread of the virus, this latest round of ECQs and MECQ seem to have had little or no effect at all in arresting this infection rate. At bukod sa pagiging ineffective, this latest ECQ and MECQ have become even costlier. NEDA estimated that using current prices, we incur a loss of 144 billion pesos for every imposition of a one-week ECQ on NCR Plus alone. This means a daily loss of 20.57 billion pesos. Furthermore, an additional 161,000 to 242,000 individuals are pushed into poverty and around 607,000 workers are displaced. As this cycle of lockdowns continues, we can only expect these numbers to rise further. Mr. Speaker, at this point, we need to recalibrate our strategy in this war against COVID. Paulit-ulit na po ang karanasan natin. Tataas ang kaso ng COVID-19, ipapatupad ang malawakang lockdown, bababa ang mga kaso, tapos sa susunod ng mga buwan, aakyat ulit, lockdown ulit. Rinse and repeat. Hindi na uubra ang paggamit ng lockdown bilang circuit breaker. That we opt to remain in this vicious cycle despite its devastating effect on the lives of everyday Filipinos is a disservice to our countrymen. 
we must break away from the cycle and capitalize on the gains that we have already made. Pagod na pagod na rin ang mga sundalo natin, ang ating mga medical frontliners, kulang na kulang sila sa bilang at wala rin silang sapat na sandata. Ni hindi nga sila nababayaran ng sapat. Hindi na pwedeng shotgun approach ng isang ECQ. Ang kailangan sa ngayon ay surgical strikes na kung saan pipiliin lamang ang mga household, group o ng household, kalsada, barangay o LGU na mapapaloob sa lockdown o bahay muna policy. Just last week, the IATF announced the pilot testing of a novel approach to lockdown policies in NCR. Ang sabi po ng gobyerno, granular lockdown po ang susubukan sa Metro Manila mas localized as mas targeted. Mr. Speaker, there is huge potential in this. Mas mamomonitor at maaalagaan ang mga apektadong mamamayan sa targeted areas at dahil mas kaunti sila, mas may kakayanan ng gobyerno na magbigay ng ayuda. Gamitin natin ang galing ng ating mga barangay officials at barangay health workers sa pag-implement nito. Ang aking dagdag na mungkahi, a granular lockdown must be triggered by et epidemiologically determined thresholds on number of COVID cases and infection growth rate. Dapat matik, hindi na dapat pinagbobotohan ng mga LGU. Sa ganitong sistema ng granular lockdown, hindi na kailangan ng ECQ, MECQ, GCQ, at MGCQ. Tutal, napakahirap naman tandaan ang mga acronym na to. Napakahalaga din na mapaigting ang Barangay Health Emergency Response Teams o BHERTS na ayon kay Secretary Duque ay ang first line of defense natin sa COVID. Hindi naman kasi lahat na nagkaka-COVID ay dapat magpa-ospital. Pero hindi ito alam ng marami sa atin. Kung susundan natin ang siyensya, di dapat lumagpas ng 10% ang COVID cases ang dapat magpa-ospital. Pero dahil walang mapagtanungan ang ating mga kababayan, maaaring dumederecho sila sa ospital. Maaaring wala rin silang gamot para sa mild symptoms o mga vitamina para sa pagpapalakas ng katawan. Baka naman ito-ito ang mga dahilan kung bakit napupuno ang mga ospital. Sa isang granular lockdown, mas mapapatupad ang isang epektibong hospital referral system. Bukod sa BHERTS, kailangan din paigtingin ng DOH ang hospital referral system mula sa mga barangay. At sa isang granular lockdown, Mr. Speaker, mas masisigurado na makakapagbigay ng ayuda ang gobyerno sa affected households. Mas madali ang distribution at mas abot kaya kung may problema sa pondo. Pero sa totoo lang po, ang lumalabas sa mga budget briefings so far, marami pang pondo na pwedeng gamitin para sa ayuda mula sa DSWD 2021 budget, pati na rin para sa mga medicine kits para sa mild COVID cases mula sa DOH 2021 budget. With a more effective disease control strategy, we have the greater luxury to think about reopening the economy while ramping up vaccination. MMDA Resolution Number 21-19 on Bakuna Bubbles is a step in the right direction. Fully vaccinated individuals will now be accorded greater mobility. Basta bakunado ka, pwede kang magtrabaho it, o di kaya magnegosyo. Pero parang kulang pa, Mr. Speaker. Kung gusto mong magpagupet, pwede ka lumabas basta fully vaccinated ka. Ngunit saan ka naman ligtas na magpapagupit? Pwede ka sa barberia na fully vaccinated ang mga empleyado, regular ang testing ng empleyado, at sapat ang social dis distancing protocols. Tandaan natin na yung magpapagupit, minsan lang pupunta sa barberia. Pero yung empleyado, araw-araw at buong araw nasa barberia. Kaya't kailangan masigurado na yung barberia ay bubble din. Kailangan din ang patakaran sa business bubbles. All businesses, whether es essential or non-essential, with fully vaccinated employees can operate but shall still be required to adhere to minimum health standards and must conduct regular testing of their workers. 
tulad ito ng tourism bubbles na pinatupad ng DOT at naging successful sa pagbukas ng tourism sector. Mr. Speaker, we often hear that the policy to address COVID-19 is necessarily a trade-off between health and the economy, and that we must choose. Buhay ba o kabuhayan? I vehemently disagree with this statement. Itong proposed recalibrated approach ang siyang sabay na makakatugon sa layuning pangkalusugan at pang-ekonomiya. It will take a well-chosen mix of policies, ramping up of vaccination, granular lockdown, bakuna bubbles, business bubbles, ayuda, hospital referral system, sufficient number of healthcare workers, sufficient protection and compensation for healthcare workers to effectively stop the spread of COVID. And thus far, we have left the choice of policies to the IATF. Today, it is ripe for Congress to join this conversation. It is the duty of Congress as a representative of the Filipino people to ensure that expert opinion is vetted, that the sentiments of the people are heard, that efforts of all relevant government agencies are well coordinated, and that there is clear monitoring and accountability on the outcomes of the war against COVID. For these reasons, Mr. Speaker, together with our esteemed chair of the Economic Affairs Committee, Chair Sharon Garin, I will file a resolution seeking to urge the IATF, MEID, and the executive to recalibrate its strategy and to lift its pandemic response quarantine measures. Hindi na pwedeng umasa na lamang sa isang shotgun approach then we cross our fingers that we are able to hit the target transmission chains and infection clusters fast enough. At sa gitna ng surgical attacks sa COVID, hayaan magkaroon ng double bubbles, bakuna bubble, pati business bubble. It is my hope that Congress joins this conversation where we can agree on what the right cocktail of policies are and strongly commit to these. Only then can we finally leave the vicious cycle that we find ourselves in and work, and work towards a direction where we pursue both the safety of our countrymen and the recovery of our economy, our livelihoods, and our country. I count on the support of my colleagues here in the House of Representatives. Maraming salamat po.